Hello everyone. Welcome back to Proving Ground Whips. Today I'm at the Samaritan. There was Samaritan store and I, I apologize for my throat. It's uh, kind of sore right now so I'm going to probably be getting live uh, while I'm waking up. But um, so one of my first finds and uh, I passed on these because many of the discs weren't very good condition was uh, a lot of Dragon Ball Z DVDs. Now, you're going to see some other ones mixed here. Apparently, somebody had a box set and all the individual parts got separated. So... <clears throat> so, there, there was quite bits of it. But, um... I looked at a few of them and a lot of the conditions very, very varying. So, I was just kind of like, uh, I'll just pass on that. <clears throat> Uh, if you're doing these kind of thrifting things, you sadly have to look for a lot of these blank things. Because you never know what's in them, and sometimes you might get lucky and find something you're interested in. But sadly, I'm not really a movie person, so that, that usually has a much lesser percentage of being something I'm interested in. But you can sometimes still find things in them. Sadly, the DBZ DVD is pretty much the only thing really in there of any interest. And I, I didn't feel like taking a whisk on the condition, to be honest. They were just kind of mere condition. I didn't, I didn't feel like it'd be worth really picking up. Hey, high school musical. You better get that. Mm. Curious, George. I don't think I found a game in any of these today, either. Which is a real shame. But anyway, enough of all these stupid blank co uh, cases, let's move on here, shall we? So, uh, over here we found a very weird thing. Star Wars Math. Now, I've never heard of that. I was maybe even half tempted to get it, but I was just kind of like, well, it's age, it's, eh. it's condition was all white though. But I, I passed on that. And I also found a copy of Air Tycoon, Airport Tycoon, and the condition is quite bad looking, and I'm not in the Tycoon games really anyway. Chest Master, 7,000. If I had a penny for every time I saw that cover, I'd witch. We also find Comic San Diego Junior Detective, which I find again later on in the future. Sadly, this one looked awful as the point of the case wasn't even connected to it, and you could even visibly see the damn sale. Drive Green Park Simulation. <laughs> we also have the Sims, which I only have, but you find these all the time, and it was kind of failing condition. Now, here's some fun. This, this particular version of I Don't Know Jack Sports, I did not buy, but I actually did get this game on the same day at a completely different store. The one I got was in really good condition. This one wasn't too bad. It had a little scuffs on it, and I kind of varied on whether I wanted to get it or not. Now, sadly, the last store I went to that's in this video my uh, battery for my new glasses camera died, so I didn't get any footage of that soon, sadly. But I did get that, and of course, no Proving Grounds thrifts would be complete without finding a copy of School Tycoon. Uh, I also found a copy of Wolfenstein. I passed on these because um, the condition was kind of meh. I, I didn't really feel like uh, trying for one of the PC games. You're always taking a whisk, like, that's probably the code for it, but that would be taking a whisk, and that's always a whisk when you're messing with PC games, sadly. Now, uh, there's always a varying number of PC games, usually, at this thrift store, usually because of people like me, who understand that sort software can't be really given away so simple. Great Outdoors, and here was a copy of Larry Suit Larry, Glacial Suit Larry 7, I believe, which was the last one, and it, its condition was awful, and it was here the last time I came here, and 
exact same problem. Or get in 12 and be dual, dual quests or whatever. We play the thing fill. And here's something. This one I actually did pick up. It was the first one I picked up. Uh, it's a Sierra game, and I've never heard of it. I'm not quite sure how the gameplay goes exactly, but from the looks of it, it looked like it was interesting, and the condition was a little bit off, but it wasn't like to a point where you wouldn't think it salvageable. <coughs> Pardon me. <coughs> so I, I pretty much picked it up. It was only two dollars. Man, today must be Tycoon Day, because as you can see here, there's a crap of soup Tycoon Heaven here. <coughs> In a copy of Rainbow Six. Of course, the bad thing is, being EA games in the more modern era, you have to question whether you can actually use these. <coughs> uh, whether they have codes, what kind of code system it has, does it do online? Limited installs, you know, that kind of thing. We found one of the expansions. Now, here's something that was really random. And I actually did buy this. Now, this is for... <coughs> oh, funny. Uh, this is for a IBM PC. It's compatible with uh, what's called a Teddy 1000, 1200, and 3000. Uh, I'm not really familiar with computers in these kind of days, aside from Apple's too. Uh, this kind of tugged on uh, old, uh, sh old little childhood memories. Uh, the artwork is some artwork that was used on NES games, Sesame Street did. And um, it was missing one of the uh, discs, but if you count both the floppy disks and the um, the the regular disc, it basically has them all in one version. The the hard disc has all of them, and the floppy discs have them in individuals. And uh, Big Board Special Delivery was missing as a big floppy disc. And not only simply because it reminded me of some old NES games uh, that me and my sister got from our parents. Uh, my sister had the bell one. Obviously, uh, with the speech impairment, the fact that I was deaf growing up until about five when uh, we moved back to America because my dad was in the military and doctors realized in America that my earlobe was too small and I couldn't heal and I had to have two so I could heal. Uh, my parents got me, of course, uh, a more spelling and talkative version. My sister had a more creative version that I always enjoyed more. We always take a look at uh, the board games. You sometimes can find interesting things on the board games, or old computer games sometimes being mistaken for board games. But uh, I didn't see anything of interest. But hey, you know, if you see something you recognize, feel free to give a shout out to it. <laughs> for some reason at the Samaritan store, they always put all the walk band shit and stuff over here with the little kid toys. I'm not really sure if they're just stupid or lazy. I don't know. But that's pretty much all we got there. Just two pickups at that store. And this is my old GameStop when I was still living with my parents. Sadly, there wasn't really anything to find, even though they had a two for one deal with uh, DS and Wii U titles. But Bomb Simulator on the beta really poked out. And I wanted to throw this in as a really quick example of how annoying this shit is. Like, it's so fucking annoying to go through these stupid fucking bins like this. I hate this shit. Normally, I'll just go through all of it, pick everything that seems interesting, and then ask the store manager if it's an unfamiliar employee if I can look at the discs. Uh, most of the ones that are familiar with me don't really give a shit. Um, and, uh, <clears throat> at a little store I went to, which my camera was dead, uh, dead at the time, um, 
they they were completely unfamiliar. They they looked at me. They were like, uh, okay, but our stuff's normally good. Normally good. <laughs> Out of all the discs I salvaged out here to look at, probably 90% of them look like shit. There's a copy of the boy in a blob that's been in this thing for quite a while that looks off. Like, I mean, so, like, even if it was just semi damage, I would even just go buff it actually, because I've been playing that so badly. But. It is just fucking wet. Like, I'd be surprised. I really would be surprised if it fucking Or even was salvageable. Yeah, you could briefly saw it there for a second. But yeah, I just wanted a quick example of how fucking annoying going shit can be just to find a few treasures. But let me tell you, it is very satisfying when you find some treasure in this. But sadly, today we did not find any finds today. Which is a bit of a shame. It's always worth checking into them, especially when they're new. After they've been rotting for a while, usually they've been plucked of most good stuff. But depending on what you consider good stuff. Now, uh, my goodwill, where I, where I used to live in St. Marble, and, um, I hate it, like, really bad. And I want to show a quick example of why. Look at this fucking mess. Look at this mess. How are you supposed to see what half this shit is? I, I've been in only to a few good wills, but I really wish mine could take an example, or at least the one that's closest to me could take an example, and be semi-decent and organized and shit, but it's awful, and then getting service to look at the shit is awful, and usually, <clears throat> and usually a lot of them will get mad and chill and don't give a crap, so here's a find I got, and I did purchase this one. This would be our third find today. Lords of the Realm 2. I see this in the first one on GOG uh, for sale like all the freaking time. I, I've i been briefly considering getting it here and now. And I probably would still get it too because at least I wouldn't have to work with uh, compatibility issues. Uh, but, you know, it was a physical version of it and that. That's always nice too, so I kind of figured, and it was in really good condition. I'm a sucker. Uh, Electronics didn't have anything interesting, but they did have a pink Disney television for all you boys and girls looking for Disney television. Now this is in uh, a town that's nearby. I don't usually come to here very often. It's my second time actually ever coming to this Goodwill, uh, and as you can see it. It has a much better display system for most of its stuff, but obviously for little things you still have to look around there. Uh, shockingly, I've never seen Atari games at a good will before. So, um, I thought that was actually interestingly odd to see. And we can see a little copy of Halo OSTD hiding there. Piece of shit. I can't believe that I paid fight for that piece of shit just to have some co-op. But Trix, the only thing I found was uh, this odd white gun really here. Uh, it has a PS2 plug, but I could not really find anything about who made it. Uh, I'm not really sure whose it is or brand or that. It, it doesn't look like uh, any of Namco's uh, gun cons, so I, I was kind of curious about it, but I couldn't really find anything. Uh, found a uh, original Atari control ball, and also a Atari plug and play. Oh wait, no, no, that 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 was a Atari control. Also, I have to mistake. There was a 360 quick, and we had a PC joystick, which I don't usually get to see too much of. But hey. Now here's a blast from my past. Uh, me and my sister had this as a kid. Uh, Still code maker for Snoopy. It was with all the board games on it. And also there was this uh, car wheel, which uh, had a PS1 output. And um, I'm not really interested in wheel, uh, car wheels and stuff, to be honest, unless they're really cheap. But to be honest, uh, this was actually pretty decent, but it wasn't cheap enough. Okay. So I went back to the uh, glass stand and started asking, now that somebody wasn't busy, asking for a little bit so I could start dissecting what we got in here. And 
after rummaging in this bag, we find the uh, fourth thing I picked up during this thrift. And it is one of the few games I really needed a part of the series I've never had luck with, and it is The Legend of Zelda Oracle of Ages. Now, I've tried to got Oracle of Ages about four times, and it has always been a course to me. Every time there was something wrong, it was a pirated version, it was dead, it didn't work at all, it was a corrupted version of the game. And I'm happy to report this version does work. The battery is still functional, it still has saves on it. Now here is a thrift store that's in that same town as the Goodwill. And it's it's pretty big and immediately we always got tons of software being shoved in our face here at the entrance. I uh, love having that to all the way on display. You find uh, quite a few uh, random different entries of games here. Uh, a lot of demos in here too, which um, I don't know really a lot of people interested in demos too often. And we find our next find with a USA San, uh, Common San Diego. Uh, this disc was beautifully well conditioned. There was no damage at all to it. I was just shocked. It's such a shame it doesn't have its case. And it, it looked really good. It really did. It's it's definitely in very good condition and we definitely had to get that. And the next one is a PC version of Taito Legends. Uh, I did not actually even know this was on PC. I've been wanting to actually get the, uh, either the Xbox or PS2 version of it, but you know, it was uh, only four dollars in the condition of the disc. It was a little dirty, but it looked like it was fine, really. Obviously, the case uh, looks horrible. It has tape everywhere. It's beat up like shit. It's really a shame. And then shortly after all this, uh, walking around this place, my battery died right after uh, what we'll see later on is a game two. And I would get, I don't know, Jack at a uh, Army Salvation place. And that was pretty much my last actual pickup. Now we found another copy of Common San Diego Juvenile Detective. It was off condition. I was just like, man. That one wasn't as awful as the other one, though. <laughs> but it was still bearing condition. Now here's the GameCube, and this would be the end. Um, it didn't have its disc or that, so I kind of figured it was a pass, man. So we ended up finding one, two, three, five, six, seven games. Not too bad of a deal, really. It's obviously not a huge stash. Sadly, really, depending on how many thrift stores you can access and how often you go, and time can vary a lot too, but. Don't ever get, if you ever decide to do thrifting, to look for old software games and stuff, you can't really give up. Because <coughs> stuff doesn't wait for the sky. Only the determined will find stuff. But it is, it is a lot of time consumption searching through a lot of the random rubbish in there that's and it all depends on how the store wants itself and nice and stuff and that. <coughs> but pretty much everything was pretty cheap. The only expensive thing was the Legend of Zelda uh, of ages. And that was because uh, apparently somebody actually knew its value. Uh, it was still $2 cheaper than when it goes online. So, And the inside was very nice condition so I took a gamble on it. It functions like it's it was fifteen dollars. It goes usually from sixteen seventeen online as the current time of this recording. So I figured it was it was all right. I, I, it was one of the few Zelda games I still need for my collection. And one of the few reasons I never really 
got into got to really fall in seasons because I, I was never gonna finish the game without ages obviously. I need to complete both journeys and such. But anyway that's today's proving ground clips. I hope you enjoyed viewing and dealing with today's episode. Um <clears throat> I apologize for my throat being sore. I I'm sure it wasn't uh, the most pleasant thing to listen to, but Fun. Yeah. No, I don't really feel sick. Just my throat feels really bad. I, I'm not. Well, it, I don't feel sick, but my throat just—it doesn't bother me. I just don't sound like talking at the moment. I'm not sure why. But I've been getting a lot of positive. I, I definitely want to say I've been getting a lot of positive feedback from the the kind of idea of doing here with picking up and that. Like I said, I tried to do this with my cam core before, and you know, I, I had a lot of issues of getting okay to record that. This new system's been going very well. Nobody has had a problem or said anything of that, so it's been going very nicely. I've been getting a lot of good comments and positive reception to this, so I, I will enjoy this, and I would like to shout out, though, again, is... Um, I'm gonna leave my twiddle down below, cause I I really like an idea that somebody else who's also doing this, and immediately that's what kind of inspired me to try this again. Um, plays a game with views, uh, with show. Now obviously I tried to do this before, like I said, so, but. I kind of got encouraged to try it again, and I'm, I've been enjoying doing the new way of doing this and that. And I kind of like the idea he does with his show, in showing uh, people's finds that he gets tweeted on Twitter. So, I'd actually, I like that idea too, so I want to leave my Twitter account down below. And if you also do thrifting and that, feel free to take a picture of what you find, and send it to me on Twitter and I will actually add them into my Twitter. But we'll see how that I'm not sure what how many yeah out there do that, but if you do I I like I really like digging around for stuff. I found a lot of great stuff with the bargain bins and things. So it it it's very fun. It's it's a really steal thy shovel moment when you find awesome stuff. And it's so random. I mean, like, you know, those all those box DOS games came from the fourth store, the Samaritan store at the very beginning of this video. That's where all those really big DOS, uh, uh, that I, like, Kingsfield mad that, that I found. I, those are, were an amazing find. You just gotta keep looking. It's the only way you can find this stuff, sadly, is to keep looking. So don't ever get disagorged, because it takes a good amount of time to find good stuff. When you do, it feels great. So I hope everyone enjoyed today's episode. I still love hearing uh, any feedback about this. Um, I, I'm trying to balance showing off the stores and not filling it with too much of the actual searching through dead shit. You know, like music CDs and DVDs and that. I try to get to mostly the point. But, you know, whether if you want to see more of the stores, or if you like it to more to the point of finds or interest, uh, feel free to leave feedback down below about that. I, I've been getting a lot of positive and decent criticism about this so far, so I, I've been glad there's been a lot of positiveness about good qui good criticism. Not necessarily everything positive, but uh, you know, having decent criticism is a good thing too. If you can't take decent criticism, then you can never put it right. <laughs> anyway, I'll see you all next time, and thank you for watching.